Hey guys, so in today's video, I wanted to make a video regarding the Sabbath. And as many of the people who do follow this channel, I don't talk on the Sabbath a lot. Um, and so I wanted to make a video regarding the Sabbath. Should the Sabbath be kept? Is the Sabbath part of God's moral laws? Etc, etc. And I at least want to give my story and what I've come to at this point, at least what God has revealed to me at this point. Um, so obviously I grew up in the church system not believing, you know, keeping the Sabbath. Because the church doesn't really believe in keeping the Sabbath. I mean, sure, give the Sabbath to God, maybe go to church or something like that on Sunday. Whether it's Saturday or Sunday, there's a debate for you. Um... That was never really a thing. The most of it was just, oh, go to church on Sunday. That's the Lord's day, so go to church. And that was about it. Not really resting from, you know, uh, what is it, sunrise to sunset or sunset to sunrise. Or, well, one sunset, uh, like Friday night to sunset Saturday night or whatever the Sabbath is. Never was part of my life. Then I started seeking to follow God and reading, his, reading the Bible, and learning that I needed to keep God's commandments. And obviously, when you learn to keep God's commandments, obviously the Sabbath is something that's going to come up. And something I want to make sure is very clear is that I am a truth seeker. And that that's basically my story, is I'm reading the Bible as it is, and as I'm reading it, I am following and obeying it. And that means I'm open to anything. For example, I think it was either today or yesterday, I think it was today, I was watching a video about the Mandela effect related to the Bible, where it's believed that um, CERN or whoever the secret organization that's working along with the devil has changed the Bible and that passages have changed. Now it's no longer the lion lies down with the lamb, it's now the wolf lies down with the lamb and all this other stuff and going down the rabbit hole and all that kind of stuff. Do I knock that stuff out just because I find it silly? No. I will look at it logically and reasonably and see if there is any truth to it. Because that is how I am. That's how I choose to live my life. Open to logic and reason. I'm a seeker of truth. And if Islam was true, then I would follow that truth. Because if Islam was true, God wouldn't be real. Or the, the God of the Bible wouldn't be real. Um, but obviously the God of the Bible is real, it's reasonable and logical, and there's evidence to prove that God does exist, and that the God of the Bible is true, and that the Bible is reliable, and so that's why I follow it. And so that, 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 that's what I follow by. I am a truth seeker. So, when it comes to things related to the Sabbath, or any other biblical teaching that could be salvation related, I... I am completely open, and even if I make a decision on something, I will still listen to other people's opinions and arguments and reasons, but for me personally, um, I do not believe in keeping the Sabbath. I believe it's part of the ceremonial laws. I believe it passed away. I do not believe it's part of God's moral laws. I don't believe it's built into every human being. I don't think it's part of God, the conscience that tells us right from wrong, built into everyone. Um... I believe it's part of the ceremonial laws. Um, but does that mean I'm stuck in that mindset and I'm just going to ignore truth like the rest of the world? No. I am completely open to anyone telling me about the Sabbath and if I should keep it or not. And if I find out that the Sabbath is part of God's moral laws and I was deceived, then okay, I'm going to follow it. I have no problem following it. It's not like, oh no, now I have to take a day off and rest and spend time with God. How horrible. No. Uh, it, there, there is nothing wrong with that. I just don't think one day should be necessarily given to God. I think all our days should be given to God. Um, but the main point of this video is I have questions concerning the Sabbath. And maybe these will be questions you want to consider yourself if you are looking into whether you should keep the Sabbath or not. Um, and these are questions I have genuinely and would like answers to. And before you go in the comments section and start telling me all this other stuff about the Sabbath and, oh, look, it says it's this kind of covenant. And, I mean, I've talked to Sabbath people. When people find this channel, they assume that I'm a part of the Yeshua and Yeshua uh, kind of group where they have all you need to say the name in the, you know, the Hebrew name. And they're changing the name of Jesus to this weird thing. And 
uh, keeping the Sabbath and dietary laws. I talk to those people and I'm open to them. Um, but the thing is, I need these questions answered if I were to keep the Sabbath. And it needs to be a good, logical, reasonable answer. Because um, a lot of times I'll ask these questions, but I don't get my questions answered. And I'm not here trying to prove my point and fight you guys on the Sabbath. I am a truth seeker. So if you're telling me what you're saying is true, you need to be able to prove that to me. You need to be able to answer my questions. So with that, let's get into the questions I have. And also some other ones I was looking on the internet that other people had, and now they're added to my list because I was like, hey, that's a really good question. That needs a good answer. So, question number one. Why is no one before Moses ever being told to keep the Sabbath? Why are there no examples of anyone keeping the Sabbath um, before Moses? Because when you do look at that, Noah, he didn't keep it. Adam and Eve, they didn't keep it. Um, even though the Sabbath happened before Adam and Eve, we don't see any example of that. Cain and Abel, etc., etc., Abraham, we do not see examples of them keeping the Sabbath. Why is that? If the Sabbath was, you know, initiated in Genesis chapter, I believe it's like one or two, where God rests on the seventh day, I mean, if that is when the Sabbath was made, they should be following the Sabbath. But we don't see mention of that before Moses. Or if we do, please share the scripture. Question number two, why is the weekly Sabbath commandment never quoted in the New Testament? And I find this one to be a main question that I have because, you know, keeping God's commandments, all right, we see that in Old Testament, New Testament. We see uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10, Galatians 5, 19 through 21, Revelation 21, 8, Ephesians 5, 3 through 5. All these passages all have mention of sins that will keep people out of the kingdom of heaven. Never one of those is breaking the Sabbath. We see every other sin mentioned there, and we see all the other sins mentioned in the New Testament except the Sabbath. Why is that? And a lot of people will say, well, the, the New Testament and Old Testament, those are just made up terms to separate the books. It really, it's the whole thing together. But still, once Jesus came and what Jesus taught on earth, he never taught keeping the Sabbath. I mean, this would be a major point to pass on, especially to the Gentiles, because a lot of the New Testament is the Gentiles being able to have salvation. So keeping the Sabbath would be an important thing to teach the Gentiles, since it was mainly Jews practicing it. But Old Testament is mentioned, New Testament, we don't. I, I've never seen a single scripture where it is mentioned people keeping it. They'll bring up verses like, oh, make sure your trip isn't on the Sabbath. Um, and like, which is referring to like the end times, um, or in, I think somewhere in Revelation it might mention something, but we never see a command to keep the Sabbath, and we never see not keeping the Sabbath, keeping someone out of heaven. So I find that very odd and percu peculiar that we don't see any mention of the Sabbath in the New Testament. Every single other command mentioned Old Testament, New Testament, except the Sabbath. I find that odd. Number three, why is the Sabbath the only one of the Ten Commandments that are said to be throughout your generations? The usual phrase that indicates a, it was a temporary ceremonial law only for the Jews. Exodus 31.13, which I will read for you. Exodus 31.13 says, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. So I mean right there, it's giving kind of the indication that the Sabbath is through for you, referring to Israel and your generations, not necessarily, you know, referring to the Gentiles. Which we're going to get more to that in another question coming up here. Um, I think this verse will apply later and we'll bring that up later as we get to that question. Number four is another one I brought up, which is why is there no command in the New Testament for Christians to keep the Sabbath holy? We never see it mentioned. Again, Old Testament and New Testament commands, we see every other sin listed as a command we need to keep, but we don't see the Sabbath in the New Testament commands to keep, especially towards the Gentiles. Why aren't they told to keep this? I mean, this could be also a spot referring to that back to that Exodus 31, 13. This is for you and your generations, not for everyone around the world, not for every single Gentile, uh, the people of Nineveh, 
etc. We don't see this command going out. We just see it for you and your generations, making it seem like it's just meant for Israel at that time. Number five, if the Sabbath was for Gentiles and Adam, Noah, and Abraham, then why is the Sabbath a sign to remind their exodus from Egypt? Exodus 16, 23 uh, and verse 29, also Exodus 31, 13 through 18. And in those verses, it mentions uh, the Sabbath keeping. So let me read Exodus 16, which was one of the chapters I mentioned here. Uh, verse, uh, verses uh, 23 and then verse 29. Verse 23 says, And he said unto, him, unto them, this is that which the Lord hath said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, and see thee that ye will oh seethe that ye will seethe, and that which remaineth overlay up for you to be kept until the morning. And verse twenty nine See for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath. Therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. Again, this is more of reference to their exodus within Egypt, which is an interesting point. Question number six. If the Sabbath is not a ceremonial law, then why is it lumped into the same identical class of holy uh, convocations as the rest of the Jewish feast days? Leviticus 23.2, Exodus 29, and also Exodus 31, verse 17. Question number seven. How could the Sabbath be a sign between God and Israel if all nations were expected to keep it? Back to Exodus 31, verse 17. Why is it only meant for Israel? Why wasn't all the nations meant to keep it if it wasn't just a ceremonial law meant for Israel for that time? Question eight. Why did God send the Jews into Babylonian captivity for breaking the Sabbath, but never, ever criticize any Gentiles for never keeping the Sabbath? Again, why are the Gentiles all left out of this? Why aren't they uh, a part of this? Why don't they have to keep the Sabbath if it's supposed to be for everyone? Question number nine. If the Sabbath is a moral law, how could Jesus break it without sinning? John 5.18 now, you may say, well, no, Jesus never broke the Sabbath. But let me read you John 5.18 here, because I think this is a very good point. Now, note, this is not someone speaking. This is the words of the Bible describing the situation. Um, these are the words in black, not the words of Jesus or the words of the Pharisees. So it says here, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. And this is the writer of John describing what's going on here. And it says they're mad at him not only because he broke the Sabbath. So John's even stating in this description that he broke the Sabbath. Because again, if you look at what the Sabbath says, it says you can't do anything on the Sabbath. And if you do, you are guilty and you must be punished for it. And Jesus broke the Sabbath. Sure, he was doing good on the Sabbath. But if you look at the Old Testament laws, it never says that you can do good on the Sabbath. It never says that. Jesus was healing people on the Sabbath. The Bible says you can't do any work on the Sabbath. Even if it's a good work, it's still work. So I'd like an interesting explanation for this. Why does John 5.18 say Jesus breaks the Sabbath? Is John lying? Did he make a mistake when he was writing the Bible? Because it says he broke the Sabbath. Question number 10. If the Sabbath will endure forever because it's called eternal, then won't all the Jewish feasts and circumcision also endure because it is also called eternal? In Genesis 17, 10 through 14, the same Hebrew word is used. Question 11. If the Sabbath will endure forever because God hallowed it, then won't Solomon's temple, Psalm 65 verse 4, 1 Kings 9 verse 3, and the vessels in the tabernacle, Exodus 40, verse 9, Numbers 31, uh, 6, and 1 Kings 8, verse 4, also endure forever because God hallowed them too? Question 12. If the Sabbath will endure forever because it was an eternal sign between God and his people, then shouldn't we also still practice circumcision, Genesis 17, verse 11, 
and Passover, Exodus 12, verse 13, because it too is called an eternal sign between God and his people. And then finally, uh, question number 13, which is Matthew 19, 17 through 19. Why is it that when Jesus goes through the commandments that he needs to keep, he doesn't mention the Sabbath? He goes through every other command of loving their neighbor and loving God. But then he says, one thing thou lackest, go and sell what you have, give to the poor, and then you will have treasure in heaven, meaning you will be saved if you will sell your possessions. Not if you will then start keeping the Sabbath. So these 13 questions I would like answers to because I think a lot of them don't make sense in my head. I don't know how it could be a moral law, yet the Gentiles don't have the law themselves and are never told to keep it themselves or are never rebuked for not keeping it. And then the New Testament is just left empty about this subject. All we see is, you know, the works of the law won't justify and we see you know, the commandments contained in ordinances being done away with in Ephesians 2.15. But these are questions I would like answered on the Sabbath. And I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave it down in the comments and let me know. That's about it I have for this video. Thank you for watching.